low budgets require big imaginations. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 low-budget movies. It's really not much of a scratch. I don't think it's even... Ain't the size is in question here. For this list, we'll be taking a look at films that were made by major studios or independent investors with a budget no greater than $1 million. And these films not only earned huge returns at the box office, they also became cult favorites, launching the careers of some of Hollywood's most profitable directors in the process. You know what the f you look at? I'll kick your fing ass. Shit, yeah. Do that motherfucker owe me 10 bucks? Number 10, Napoleon Dynamite. Last week, Japanese scientists explained place explosive detonators at the bottom of Lake Loch Ness. If you think featuring no-name actors and spending little to no money on advertising are good ways to break into the film industry, then you have a lot in common with Napoleon Dynamite director Jared Hess. I see you're drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? With a $400,000 budget, Hess's comedy debut about an awkward teen and his equally awkward family and friends has made a staggering $46.1 million. And that doesn't even include the massive sales on all those Vote for Pedro t-shirts. Pedro, just listen to your heart. That's what I do. But what the film brought to starring actor John Heater is something money can't buy. Mad props for his epic dance skills and nobility status in meme history. It's just too bad he didn't have the gift of foresight when he agreed to star in the film for a mere $1,000. Don't worry, they paid him more later. Yes. 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 Number 9. Clerks. 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. In a row? Who would ever want to watch a film about a day in the lives of two convenience store clerks? That would be like coming into work twice. But clerks had perfect timing, because the 90s were a decade where movies about two guys just talking were perfectly acceptable. I bet they brought independent contractors in on that thing. Plumbers, aluminum siders, roofers. And not just Imperos, is that what you're getting at? Exactly. Just like Slacker, from which Kevin Smith drew his inspiration, the film cost under $30,000 to make and has managed to become a cult classic. It garnered $3.2 million at the box office through nothing but subdued charm and static camera work, launching Kevin Smith's directing career and making sure the iconic duo Jay and Silent Bob had the chance to strike again and again in Smith's subsequent films. All you motherfuckers are gonna pay. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. Number eight, The Evil Dead. Oh God. Look at this. Some do comedy, some do horror, but only Sam Raimi can do both. Like the perfect grilled cheese sandwich, the marriage of two understated ingredients creates something stupendously cheesy. <laughs> when the film screened at the 1982 Cannes Film Festival, it sparked the appreciation of many horror fans, including the master himself, Stephen King. And though it's now a beloved cult classic, it took a few good decades and international exposure for the film to gross over $29 million. <laughs> Aside from cementing the dreaded Cabin in the Woods cliché in horror history, the film also became a self-referential media franchise, with film sequels, video games, comic books, and, more recently, a TV series. Number 7. Night of the Living Dead oh, no! Annoyed at the number of zombie-themed movies Hollywood has been pumping out lately? You can thank George A. Romero. This film started the zombie genre and is considered one of the most influential in horror history. Purposely shot to conserve every bit of the $114,000 budget, Romero carefully thought out each aspect of production. Along with the socio-political undertones attributed to the film, it sparked controversy due to its graphic nature. It is tough for the kid that old man is so stupid. Now, you get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. However, it was a critical success worldwide, making an estimated $30 million at the box office. <laughs> It probably would have made more if it weren't for a copyright oversight on behalf of the distributor, which registered the film under public domain and made it the Internet Archive's most downloaded film. <laughs> Number 6. Pi. 1245. Restate my assumptions. 1. 
mathematics is the language of nature. Darren Aronofsky's directorial debut into surreal territory won him the directing award at the 1998 Sundance Film Festival. Though most people know Aronofsky for Requiem for a Dream, that film's box office earnings weren't even twice its budget. Pi, on the other hand, has been extremely successful, making $3.2 million at the box office with a budget of $68,000 and limited distribution. You ever hear of Kabbalah? No. Jewish mysticism. Look, I'm kind of busy right here. I understand. As if math weren't enough to induce paranoia in the average viewer, the combination of religious themes and mysticism contributed to the bleak and uneasy atmosphere that is now considered Aronofsky's signature style. It's mathematics, numbers, ideas. Number five, Mad Max. Look, any longer out on that road and I'm one of them, you know? A terminal crazy. Back in the day, Mel Gibson was just an Aussie actor trying to break into Hollywood when he starred in Mad Max. With a $350,000 budget, a very modest one by industry standards, it was an astounding success that brought a near $100 million return. That impressive budget-to-earnings ratio also nabbed it the Guinness World Record for most profitable film ever made. If you're lucky, you can hack through your ankle in five minutes. Well, almost. It held that title for 20 years, until another film on our list beat its record. More on that later. Mad Max's post-apocalyptic theme inspired several sequels, including Fury Road, starring Tom Hardy, a man who's no stranger to high-grossing indie films. Number four, El Mariachi. Special effects and cinematography aren't cheap, but in the hands of a magician, a little imagination goes a long way. In his directorial debut, Robert Rodriguez was able to create magic with a mere $7,000. Just 23 years old at the time, Rodriguez shot the film in Mexico with limited resources. And Columbia Pictures executives were so impressed, they decided to distribute it in the US. The gamble was worth every penny, as El Mariachi made around $2 million at the box office. Buenos dias, ten esto. Lo he ahorrado, ten. Later, the Western action flick was inducted into the Library of Congress for its national significance and inspired subsequent sequels. The total box office earnings for the Mexico trilogy, $125 million. Number three, The Blair Witch Project. In the torso of each man, the intestines had been torn out crudely. Love it or hate it, The Blair Witch Project is almost solely responsible for the found footage genre. And in the age of the selfie stick, this genre is only too happy to make a comeback. With the gimmick that real witches live in our national forests, it easily duped audiences into shelling out $248 million at the box office. <laughs> The real mystery is how the film cost $60,000 to make when all it took was three actors, a shaky camera, and some camping equipment. Heather, that is so not cool, man. I know it's not that cool. That is so not cool. I know it's not cool. Despite this, the Blair Witch Project crew has the undying gratitude of any independent filmmaker for discovering a winning B-horror formula. The shakier the camera, the bigger the revenues. And it's all because of me that we're here now. <laughs> Hungry. <laughs> Cold. And hunted. Number two, Halloween. Michael? This film and its antagonist might as well be known as the sucker that just won't die. With seven sequels for the franchise and what seems like near eternal immortality for Michael, Halloween was put together with a $300,000 budget and made $70 million at the box office. <laughs> The film's horror elements rely very little on special effects, instead opting to build tension through editing and a haunting musical score, composed by director John Carpenter himself. Carpenter admitted to being inspired by another low-budget slasher, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, which also made a killing at the box office. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. There was value in the thing, clearly. That they were certain of. 
But what is the application? In a matter of hours, they turned it to everything from mass transit to satellite launching. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? You had the choice. Number one, paranormal activity. You can either buy a second-hand car or you can make another paranormal activity movie. It took director Oren Pelly a handheld camera, a budget of $15,000 and a week off work to create what is now known as the most profitable horror film of all time. Who's there? Katie, come inside. With the power of the World Wide Web, word of mouth, an interesting marketing strategy, and some wishful thinking. Paranormal Activity pulled in a whopping $193 million at the box office. I feel it. I feel it breathing on me. <laughs> and spawned a never-ending stream of equally lucrative sequels for a combined total of $889 million. But not only did it bring home the bacon, Paranormal Activity also scared the bejesus out of everyone. you agree with our list? That sounds pretty good. What's your favorite low-budget movie? <laughs> For more cinematic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. Hey, hey you, get back here.